Hey, what's up you guys? Today we want to talk about aftermarket recoil pads for the Tika T3X. Uh, you guys know if you watch the Backfire YouTube channel, I love Tika rifles. Uh, some of the best out there for sure. But the recoil pad leaves a lot to be desired. So first of all, why would you want to switch to any of these recoil pads that we're about to show you? Um, I think two things. Number one is shootability. For me, that's by far the first one. I don't want the muzzle to jump and I want it to track back straight, straight recoil and I don't want it to be jittery, have a, have a jumpy kind of recoil because that makes the scope jostle around and then you can't see what you're hitting. Yeah. And so if you can't see where you're hitting, it's tough to make a, a subsequent change. If you're hunting, you're like, did I, did I get him? Right? And so that's the number one reason is actually the view through the scope. To me, the number two reason is just it doesn't hurt your sh shoulder as much. Yeah. Now, Tika rifles are generally very, very lightweight. And so if you're shooting a, you know, even a 6.5 PRC, some people are gonna start to feel it. Uh, 300 Win Mag, you're definitely gonna start to feel it in a lightweight platform. But we gotta talk a little bit about this recoil pad. So this is the Tika recoil pad that comes on all Tika rifles. You get this standard recoil pad. Um, let's talk about some of the problems here that are maybe non-obvious with an engineer who has spent <laughs> A lot of time, many, many, many months, yes. using uh, our advanced suite of sensors to measure how the scope moves, how the gun comes back, everything, to design better recoil pads. So what do you see here that you like and don't like? Um, well, one thing I noticed, especially for, you know, you talked about muzzle jumping, you've got this kind of swoop to it. Down the bottom. It's like flat here and then whoa, And then it jumps out at the bottom, which is the opposite of what you want. More material at the bottom is going to force that gun to kind of already, you know, it's going to kick it up even more. And when it it's a lightweight it. gun, it's not hard to kick up. Yeah. And so that's, that's pretty notorious with Tika rifles is the muzzle flip is pretty dramatic. Yeah. Um, another one that's interesting. So most people have never taken the recoil pad off. They just kind of leave it on their gun. And you have the impression that you're getting whatever that is, three quarters of an inch of nice supple rubber there uh, to soak up the recoil. And then you take it off and you look underneath, that's hard plastic. <laughs> and in fact, if you measure here how far the hard plastic extends, it depends where you are because of the rubber, but three quarters of the way up is probably the most crucial point there. You're about 13 millimeters of just hard plastic that looks like you're getting a recoil pad, but it's doing nothing. And then the whole pad is, I think we measured around 26 millimeters. So half of the pad is hard material that isn't soaking up recoil at all. It's just not, it's made to look good like most factory recoil pads, not just Tika. Most of them are like that when you take them off. Yeah. So why? Why do they design a pad that's, well, I guess one more thing you got to see. So look carefully here. So again, you're thinking you're getting that whatever, three quarters of an inch of rubber. Watch me, I'm gonna white knuckle this thing. I'm gonna push as hard as I can into this pad and watch how far we sink down. How much travel do we really have? Okay. I'm maybe getting two to three millimeters at my hardest push into that. And so you think with most guns, you're gonna get less recoil than that, less force than that. We're talking about soaking up, you know, a, a millimeter or two that we can actually sink into this pad. It's just not accomplishing much. Really, it's there to look nice and to be grippy on your shoulder so that it doesn't slide off. Yep. So love Tika, but a few changes can make a huge difference in just how this gun shoots for you. So one option is the backstop recoil pad. We spent a long time making for you, but there are others as well that we're gonna talk about that do a great job. Um, so backstop pad, what would you say is the first thing you wanted to change when you came about designing this? Um, I say the first thing was we had to make it tuned to your rifle. And, you know, if we're going to make the best recoil pad out there, we're not going to be able to accomplish that if we're aiming for both a 6.5 Creedmoor and a 300 Win Mag. Yeah. It's, it's got to be custom. They put the same recoil pad on every gun. Yep. <laughs> and yep. so it just doesn't make sense, right? If you have one that hits way harder than the other, you wouldn't create the same structure to soak up that recoil, right? That's right. So when you order a backstop recoil pad, we'll ask you, how much does your gun weigh? Do you use a muzzle brake, that kind of stuff, so that we can do a recoil calculation 
We'll do our fancy math <laughs> and then send you the pad that is tuned to your gun uh, so that it can soak up the recoil effectively. Yep. Okay, another one that I really <clears throat> like. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Hairball. Um, another unique thing about the pad is that it has a flat uh, top. A lot of people think you want this thing curved. And at first we did too, when, when we were starting to work on it. Yeah. We're like, well, your shoulder's curved and so you want the pad curved. But then we started designing sensors. You spent a long time making sensors so yeah. that we can actually measure the recoil. So here, here's just the numbers, okay? This is no like sales job, it's just like fact. Here are the numbers. You, got, you just went out 10 minutes ago yep. and shot these at the range. This is what the factory uh, Tika recoil pad looks like. Let me show you what you're looking at. When, when the graph goes higher, it means more pressure. Um, and then time is on the x-axis. And so if we see a quick spike, it means we go from no pressure to a lot of pressure really, really fast. That's scope jostle. When that's happening, your scope is bounced everywhere, right? That's what we want to avoid. Ideally, we'd have this beautiful little hill like the Windows XP screensaver. <laughs> Just a beautiful little hill. That's what we would want to see so that nothing gets bounced around in your view. So the factory pad, that's what it looks like. And then this is what the, the backstop pad looks like. Same sensor, same cartridge, same gun, just changing the pad, no other changes at all. And you can see it's a beautiful little hill. <laughs> um, and one of the reasons is the flat top. And so the reason is at first, when the recoil begins, we're only touching a portion of the pad because it's flat and your shoulder is round. And then you sink into more and more and more and more of the pad as it pushes back on you. And now we're touching more and more material that is adding that structure to provide resistance when the recoil reaches its peak. It's actually really cool. Flat honestly works a lot better. Yeah. The other reason that we get that is because of the two layered cake here with uh, one layer at the top and one layer of crush zone at the bottom. But inside the top, it looks like you might have a solid mass, but that's not what's in there. No, yeah, it's actually, it's a pretty complex lattice structure called a gyroid and it basically has thousands of little air pockets inside of it and uh, basically it keeps the pad from bottoming out. So the purpose of the two structures, that bottom layer is our crush zone and that's made to just give out right at the peak. And then the top layer right here is more just to keep your pad from bottoming out and to absorb the majority of the recoil. Yeah, so it's cool. Then, so I showed you when I pushed, you know, as hard as I could on the other pad, how little travel you have. We'll do the same thing on this pad so that you can see how much movement there is. You can come down and you see we can actually do some stuff. Um, we can actually get some movement out of that pad, both in the crush zone at the peak and the gyroid early to start slowing things down before we get there. It's a pretty cool design um, and you can just see the numbers. You can see it in the scope, being able to uh, spot your impact. But backstop isn't for everybody. There are lots of other options. Uh, as we've tested a lot of other uh, pads on the market, Limb Saver makes a great pad. It's a good company. They're really cheap. Um, basically their method is just use a really gummy material. Um, and because it's super gummy, it really sticks to your shoulder. Some say too much, um, but I like a little stick. And you do get much more travel than the other pads, but you're still only moving a, a few millimeters as you go through. The other problem by having so much gummy material is because it has a lot of density, we can only squish so far before it's essentially bottomed out given the amount of force. And so it's additive. You know, we squish the top and then the next millimeter is much harder, much harder, much harder to get, to get it to go down. And so it, um, it's good at soaking up early recoil in that curve but it tends to still go up pretty high. Yeah. The other difference we'll see here is not fair to weigh the limb saver here because this one is for a slightly different model. So it's not the exact same shape and I want to be fair. Um, but let's look at the weight. So here is the Tika pad. Everybody wants their rifle to weigh as light as possible. We're using my reloading scale. I can't read numbers upside down. <laughs> this is 689 grams, 689 compared to 542. So even though you're getting better recoil reduction, 
we're actually making your gun lighter weight, which is kind of cool to see. Yeah. Limb Saver's uh, quite a bit heavier in this configuration, um, but it, it, this it, it's not the same one, yeah. anyway. The other thing about backstop to know that is very unique is when you get your backstop pad, they all come with this. And if you are, aren't familiar with this innovation, you see it and you're like, what? <laughs> what am I looking at? <laughs> so it goes like this. Um, just when you store your gun, because we're using the correct density, right? Because it's squishy like it should be, because it's actually soaking up recoil and not just looking like it soaks up recoil. If you squish that material and leave it squished for a year or any other material, it's not the material we use, any squishy material. If you leave it squished for a year because you're storing your gun on its butt like this, it's gonna deform the pad. That is actually the real reason why factory pads suck so much yep. is because they just don't want customer service problems. If they use, it's not that they can't engineer something squishy, it's if they do, it will deform and then they got them a customer service problem. Somebody says, hey, my pad is permanently deformed. And so we didn't want any compromises in the design. And so um, this, it's not fragile at all. If you wanna, you know, you're at the hunting cabin for a week and you wanna leave it against the wall, it's fine, it's, it's totally fine. But if you're gonna store it for a month or a year, just leave this in your safe. It comes with every backstop recoil pad. This is our patent pending throne. All you do is slide it on, seal it, store your gun. It takes all the pressure off the pad. Pad has no pressure essentially on it. Uh, it's just this, the, the case. And then your pad's always gonna have the performance you want. When you're ready to take your gun out of the safe, just leave this in the safe, take your gun out and go. It's pretty cool. That's backstop. Those are some other options. Whichever one you choose, you know, your limb saver is a great cheap choice. Um, it, you know, there's a lot of benefits to it. You can look at Pockmire. There's our grind on, so you'll get it. Um, as far as I know, they have all, you know, one thing and then you grind it to fit your, uh, your gun. It's very effective, more of a foam style approach to, uh, to recoil reduction. Or I'm sure there are a thousand others, but um, that's kind of kind of what we've looked at. If you're looking for an upgrade to your Tika rifle, it's just a quick change that I think makes a big difference. Yeah.